happy Wednesday. I hope you had so much fun with Miss Amy yesterday looking at different zoo animals. And we're gonna keep learning about the zoo today, but first, we're gonna sing our songs and do our calendar. Are you ready to do hello, hello today? Let's do it.
job today. I kind of needed some help with the months of the year song, but that's okay. Are we ready to clap and see whose turn it is to jump today? Let's see, I'm gonna pick five new friends today. So first we have Lena. Lena, you stand up. Lena's here today. Lena's here today. Jump up and down and turn around because Lena's here today. All right, let's see who's next. Declan, it's your turn. Stand up, Declan. Declan's here today. Declan's here today. Jump up and down and turn around because Declan's here today. All right, next we have Otis, it's your turn. Otis is here today. Otis is here today. Jump up and down and turn around because Otis is here today. All right, I'm going to pick two more friends for today. And then we'll do another one on Friday. So, Evan, it's your turn today. Evan's here today. Evan's here today. Jump up and down and turn around because Evan's here today. All right, one more friend for today. Let's see who it is. It's Benjamin. Benjamin's here today. Benjamin's here today. Jump up and down and turn around because Benjamin's here today. Great job jumping, friends. So I will see who will get a turn on Friday. Okay, so are we ready to do the calendar now? Do you remember what's our special month with the flowers? It's May flowers for May. So can you help me spell it? Let's spell it together. M A. Why? May. Great. So we're going to count and see what number goes here for Wednesday for today. You ready to help me count? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did you say six? Great job. And here's my number six. So we're going to put it right here. And now everybody's going to stand up so we can all jump six times together. I'm going to watch you jump. Are you ready to go? One, two, three, four. Five, six. Great job jumping, friends. So we are still learning about our special letter Z and about the zoo. So I have a story for you today with one of our friends that we listen to a lot at school. His name is Curious George. So we're going to listen to a story. Curious George goes to the zoo, and I can't wait to see what you think. <laughs> Margaret and H. A. Ray's Curious George Goes to the Zoo. This is George. George is a good little monkey and always very curious. Today, George was feeling very excited. The man with the yellow hat was taking him to the zoo. As they drove, the man explained to George that this wasn't just any zoo that they were going to visit. It's called the Wild Animal Park, the man said. All of the animals roam around freely. When they arrived, George saw a huge banner. George looked up at it, but he could not read the words. A friendly zookeeper explained. It's an extra special day here at the Wild Animal Park, she said. It is our baby rhino's first birthday. We are going to have a party for her later on. A party? This was going to be a wonderful trip to the zoo. George tried to walk into the park where the animals were, but the zookeeper stopped him. You can't walk in there, she said. To explore this zoo, you have to ride in one of our special cars. She pointed to a huge car that had no roof on it. Oh my, what fun this was going to be! George and his friend climbed on board and the car drove into the park. Soon, they were in the midst of the wild animal park. Look over there, said the zookeeper. There's our pride of lions. We have a large family here. George pointed in the other direction. 
Yes, George, said the zookeeper. I see the giraffes too. Their tall necks help them eat leaves from the treetops. And there are two ostriches running this way. George was happy to be seeing so many amazing animals. The zoo car drove past a small pond. Pink flamingos waded in the water. Their heads bobbed up and down as they walked on spindly legs. The flamingos turn pink because they eat so many tiny pink shrimp, said the zookeeper. But George was not listening. He had never seen flamingos before. He was curious about how those flamingos were moving. He leaned out the back of the zoo car as far as he could to take a look. But then, oh, what happened? First, George lost his balance. Then he fell, kerplunk, right out of the zoo car. His friend hadn't noticed that he had fallen. George ran as quickly as a little monkey could toward the pond. The flamingos bobbed their heads and lifted their feet one at a time. It looked like they were dancing. George danced with them. Suddenly, the water in the pond started to move. Then, a hippo popped its head out from under the water. What a surprise! George stopped dancing to take a look. The hippo opened its huge mouth as if it were yawning. George opened his mouth wide, too. It was fun to act like the hippo. Just then, George noticed that something was rustling in the reeds near the pond. George was curious. He wanted to see what was there. In an instant, he jumped over to the reeds. He poked his nose inside and saw a baby rhino. The tiny rhino was cute, but she looked a little bit sad and a little bit lonely. George wanted to make that baby rhino feel happy again. He thought and thought. Maybe the baby rhino would like the flamingo dance. He jumped and bobbed his head and danced his feet up and down. The baby rhino peeked her head out of the reeds so that she could watch. George danced more, and the rhino walked out of the reeds. She was curious, too. They were having so much fun that George didn't notice what was behind him. The zookeeper stomped over to George. She did not look happy. The man with the yellow hat was running behind her. You are a naughty little monkey, said the zookeeper. You were supposed to stay in the car. You and your friend will have to go now. George walked to the man's side. He waved goodbye to the baby rhino. The man and the zookeeper turned to see whom George was waving to. The baby rhino? Why, we've been looking for her all day, said the zookeeper. She got separated from her mother. George was glad to see the zookeeper looking happy again. He and the man started walking toward the exit. The zookeeper ran to stop them. Thank you for finding our baby rhino, George, and just in time for her birthday party. Will you join us for some cake? George jumped with glee. He had forgotten about the party, and he did love cake. The man and George followed the zookeeper and the baby rhino back to zoo headquarters. The rhino's mother was waiting there for her. The zookeeper brought out a special birthday cake that was shaped like a rhino. George had never seen a cake like that before. You can have the first piece, George, said the zookeeper. I also have a special treat just for you. She placed a bunch of bananas in front of him. George was very happy to have a tasty banana, but he saved room 
for some cake too. So today, first we're gonna start off by making our letter Z with some shapes. So if you have yours, go get them and we can do them together. And we'll practice tracing the letter Z. And then we're gonna help this giraffe get some spots. So I'm gonna use Cheerios, but you can use a brown crayon or a dot marker. And we're gonna look for the number nine on our giraffe. Then we'll do some more work with the letter Z. We'll match up some zoo animals that we saw. Maybe we saw some of these in our Curious George story. So we'll see if there are any ones we remember from the story. And then we're gonna make a lion using some pasta. So let's have some fun. Okay, so let's take a look at what shapes we need to make our letter Z. All right, here we go. What shape is it, friends? It's a triangle. And we're gonna count and see how many triangles we use. And this one, remember this one? It's called a trapezoid. Right. And our shape last month was a diamond. So how about we put our diamonds first and we'll count those and see how many we use. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, and five. So this time we used five diamonds. And let's see how many trapezoids. So I have one trapezoid and two. Awesome. And now I'm going to slide in our triangles. Let's count our triangles. One, two, three, and the last one is four. So we used four triangles. And so now we can practice tracing the letter Z. So we always start at the one right in the corner and we go across, down, across. So we use three lines to make our Z. Let's try it again. Across, down, across. It's like making a zigzag line. Across, down, across. And one more time. Across, down, across. Z. And so I know we used a triangle and we used diamonds and we used trapezoids. Very good. Okay, so let's do our letter Z worksheet together. So I'm going to find our special color this month. It's yellow. So I'm going to use yellow. So the first thing I do is circle the letter Z at the top. Those all of our letters. And this week it's Z. So now, since we practiced on our shape sheet, we know that we can make the letter Z. So we always start where? At the top. Great, and we go across, down, across. Awesome, I can't wait to see what you guys do with your letter Z's and how you trace it. Okay, so you can color your zebra whatever color you like, but let's circle the Z's in the bottom row. So let me see, is this the letter Z? No, that's the letter R, but here it is right here, zigzag Z. So we have the letter Q. What about this one? Letter is this one? C, and then here it is, Z. So we circle it. Oh, what letter is this one? Our friend Benjamin starts with this letter. It's B, H, and you tell me, what is it? Z, so I'm going to circle it. Perfect. And we have the letter N and H. So I hope you guys had fun doing that. So now let's take a look at our giraffe. So remember I said I was going to use Cheerios, but it's okay if you don't have Cheerios or if you want to use something else, you could just dot marker. But we're looking for the number nine. So I see lots of different numbers, but we want the number nine. So I remember the number nine is a circle with a long line going down. So that's what we're looking for. And I think I see one right here. So just a dot of glue on the nine for me so I can put my Cheerio in there. And now our giraffe has some spots. Can you spot an, another number nine? Where do you see one? Do you see this one right here? There it is, the number nine, a circle and a long line. And I know that's nine. All right, I think I see another one over here right under the number 10. So I'll put another spot on the giraffe. And the last one, ooh, can you see the last one? Is it this one? 
No, that's the number five. But what about next to it? That's a nine. With a circle and a long line. Perfect. You guys did great going on a nine hunt. So now, let's see. I hope you have your zoo animal pictures ready. So I cut out all the pieces. And so I need your help to spot the other half of the animal. Hmm, let's see. Oh, what do I put on the line? I almost forgot to put my name, but I always want to practice writing my name and my letters or tracing them. Awesome. Okay, so let's see. How about we look for a rhino first, like how Curious George had to find the baby rhino. Let's see what other part looks like the rhino. Do you think it's this one? No, that kind of looks like Curious George. It's a monkey. I know that it's this one. He kind of has the same knees. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue and we'll match it up. Did you find it too? Great. So now I know I remember I saw the monkey. Can you show me which one looks like the other half of a monkey? <gasps> Actually, this one kind of looks like it goes with this. Maybe it's a gorilla because their feet they have the same feet. So this one actually matches up with our gorilla. <laughs> All right. Now let's look for the other half of the monkey. Do you see the other part of the monkey? Here he is. Put a little bit of glue. And we're almost done. We did all the top row of our zoo animals. Let's see if we can do the bottom row. So this one kind of looks like a flamingo to me. Which one has feathers? Which one of these? This one, right? has long skinny legs like a flamingo and feathers. So this might be something that would be fun to color after it dries. All right, I'm looking for a tiger next. Do you see anything with stripes on it like a tiger? This one right here. So we'll put that one down. And then our last animal, I think this one is a rhino. I don't know if that's the rhino, so then maybe this one is a hippo. A hippopotamus. Yeah, he's really big like a hippo. So I hope you guys had fun matching up all your zoo animals. So the last thing we're gonna do is try making a lion using some pasta. So I started out by cutting a face out of yellow construction paper, and I gave him some eyes and a nose and lions have whiskers. So I used my orange marker to kind of make it a little orange. So now that we have a face and a ear, some ears for him, we can give him a mane, a really thick lion mane. And for that, we'll use, looks like our bow tie pasta. So I colored some of these orange and I left some of them yellow so it looks a little different. So I'll show you how I did this, but you could also use paint or maybe you don't even have to color it at all. You could just have a golden lion. So you take your time and you go on all the little edges and creases. And these will look like lion fur. So we're gonna put these pastas all around his face. Really big lion. So we use just a little bit of glue, right? So I'll start at the top between his ears. And I'm just gonna glue this down and we're gonna give it plenty of time to dry because pasta is kind of heavy. So we gotta give it plenty of time to dry. So I'm gonna keep putting these all around his face and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here's my lion, all done. So I hope you had some fun with me today, either making a line or doing any of our activities. I can't wait to see you again on Friday with another video. So enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. Bye.